Thank you very much. Uh, can you all hear me well? Also in the back. Right. Fantastic. So, first of all, a really brief, brief intro about me. Um, just <laughs> refer to me as a startup guy and think of me as a startup guy. I've been working on the web for quite a few years. And during this presentation, I'd like to um, try to come out as gay on the billion user social network. And we'll try to see if it's easy, if it's hard, and what does it take. But first of all, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I hope you've been using the uh, official hashtag for the conference, that is SON12. Uh, I invite you to use this new hashtag for, um, for this talk, that is out as you. So done with the housekeeping, um, what is this talk about? What am I going to talk to you about? Well, um, I really like the slogan of the conference, we are open. And my question is, how open? How open are we and how open should we be? And this takes me to, uh, to the refrain. And this is probably uh, just in one slide, the whole presentation. So if you want one takeaway, it's just at the beginning. And it's just that in the age of radical openness and collaborative consumption, we need new tools to share what is intimate about us. So what is this age of radical openness and collaborative consumption? There are, um, there are talks uh, during this uh, same conference that um, explore all of these topics. And I hope everybody has a chance uh, to catch up. But I'll try to, um, uh, to make my point uh, by analyzing what is radical openness touching collaborative consumption and then diving into uh, being open about intimate aspects. So let's talk radical openness. I'd like to make three main points here. The first point is being radically open about ideas. Ideas have a tendency to be open, to, to go out in the open quite easily through language, through speech, um, through writing. What does it mean to be radically open then? Well, one organization that comes to mind uh, with the term radical openness uh, is TED. Now, TED was an elite conference, uh, and it was just an elite conference up until they decided to share their most precious asset, the TED Talks. From that moment, their organization changed greatly. They went from a conference that had just one location and one yearly appointment to more than 3,000 and to be present in a, more than 100 countries. Another example of being radically open about ideas um, is, uh, that I want to make uh, is about Phil Libin. Phil Libin is a CEO of an internet startup called Evernote in the Silicon Valley. There, there are so many startups right now and there are so many uh, talented founders out in the Silicon Valley that this might be an unremarkable story. What makes it remarkable is that Phil Libin, whenever he's called uh, to speak about his company, he doesn't just talk about the top lines and he doesn't just reveal uh, the overall data uh, and the overall financials of his company. He explains how much money does it take to convert a free user to a pay user and it, uh, it really goes into the specifics of the data that usually companies keep guarded. What happens to him is that Whenever the people talk about uh, the business model that Evernote is using, the freemium business model, they have to talk about him. So his status, his rank, uh, is greatly increased by the simple fact that he shares something that is really um, guarded by all his competitors. A second example is about sharing what we have. And by what we have, uh, I mean our goods, but also our abilities and our skills. Examples here are, um, are countless. Couchsurfing is, uh, is an online community where you can share a space that is very intimate for you, your couch, a spare bedroom, and host a traveler for free. And it's, it's something that is unthinkable outside our network economy, outside reputation systems that really create trust among individuals. More modern, so to speak, than uh, couch surfing, it's just because it's been founded more recently, is Airbnb and Breakfast, where you share the same space, but for money. 
This is happening all over the board. It's not just about space, it's also about our skills. It's about our pets, uh, the electricity that we produce on our roofs, the tools that we buy from, um, uh, from our shops and then sit uh, in our closets for 364 days a year. Um, I, I borrowed this slide from Rachel Botman and um, she uses the term collaborative consumption to define this new economy that is made possible by the network. The network creates the relationships of trust, the openness of the people makes it possible for you to access the goods that you don't possess. So that the end game is that we have shared spaces, shared tools, and a sharing economy that is creating complete new value. So being open about goods and being open about ideas is quite positive and it gives really positive effects. So let's get into the aspect that is most interesting to me. What happens if you're open about the self? Well, one should think that right now, to be open about the self, we have the right tools. We have social networks. But what are social networks today? Well, I fear that the use that we're making of social networks right now is that of a stage. A stage where we set a play, and that play is made of curating content, being uh, that our content is very professional and we look like we're always working, or be it that we always have a drink in our hands and we're always partying, but we tend to set the stage for a play, for other people to look us in a certain light. We tend to be the stock photos of people smiling and looking happy. But on my social feed recently, I encountered this. Um, sometimes I ignore these things, and, but this time I'm happy I did pay attention. It says, try to be exactly who you are. And that's pretty profound. And then it says, try to enable other people to be exactly who they are. Because we're all valuable and by our differences, we become more valuable. And this got me thinking. Um, this got me thinking and I was wondering, how can I um, make this something practical? How can I really explain uh, that we need to be exactly who we are and that this can create value in the world? And then I realized that I have a tool. I have a tool that I've used uh, in my life, um, in my workplace, with my friends, in my family, and that tool is coming out. So I set off trying to be exactly who I am on a social network. A social network being used by one billion monthly users. I'll tell you what happened. Well, first of all, during the registration screen, there is something that uh, probably um, is quite okay for 97, 98, or 99 percent of the population. But uh, you have to select a sex, and you have to select either male or female. There is no other alternative. Then you can go into the, into the preferences, and inside basic info, you can select if your, uh, what your preferences are, as long as these preferences are either being interested in men or women. One last step before we come out on the billion user social network. You can choose if you want to share this with everyone or with selected groups. And drums, and here we get coming out on the billion, dollar, billion user social network. We have um, very small news, not the big one, in the feed, and it says, Matteo changed is interested in. So to summarize, gender is absolutely just binary, and coming out is just a switch. Matteo is interested in. I would, I would say at this point uh, that we've done a lot in terms of um, what kind of value we can create by sharing our ideas and our goods and our skills, but we have a long way to go if we want to start sharing ourselves in a much better way.
let me introduce you to the genderbred person. So this infographic uh, comes from a brilliant blog called It's Pronounced Metrosexual. And you know, please spend some time on, the, on this blog. It's really, uh, it's really fantastic. And they, they really have a brilliant way of, of introducing sometimes difficult topics, sometimes awkward concepts. But the genderbred person tries to tell us that um, uh, gender expression and sexual expression is not as simple as a switch. Uh, it's made of a lot of, uh, a lot of aspects. To, to make um, um, an IT metaphor, it's made of a lot of hardware and a lot of software. And you can have, uh, obviously, biological sex, but you have gender expression and gender identity to contribute to that. And then you have the aspect that here is attra being attracted to, uh, but it's not just a switch, it's more like a slider where you can go from no one to someone in different scales. So, I believe uh, that we have to pose ourselves a really important question. How do we communicate what is intimate about us? But right now, we've been uh, talking about the digital realm and the digital world. Uh, and I would like to uh, step back to society. I live in this town, uh, I actually chose this town to live in, and uh, it's a pretty open town, and um, there is a lot of tolerance. And if you are ever in Berlin in June, and I strongly suggest you come to Berlin and to stay in Berlin in June, there is lots of events, um, there is a gay pride. Uh, but not everybody knows that there is not just one gay pride, there are two gay prides. There is one big parade, and everybody goes there, and then there's a, uh, a smaller um, parade called the Transgeniale TSD that was born around 10 years ago in Kreuzberg. And here you won't find the, the stereotypical LGBT people, and, and sometimes you will have a little bit uh, of insight. And this year I had this insight because I, I, was, I was marching around and I found this sign. So this sign reads, fight heteronormativity and I completely agree with the need to fight heteronormativity. Um, I completely agree with the fact that if you're 35 and you're male you shouldn't necessarily be married with kids and uh, people shouldn't t um, take these things for granted about you. But then it goes further and it says to fight homonormativity, to fight that kind of normativity that you create when um, the people come together and they create a community, a closed community that says, yes, we are gay and you have to be out because you are not. And go on, fight trans normativity, fight queer normativity. In a word, go towards a non-normative society. This is a grandiose vision. I don't think we're going to reach this anytime soon. Uh, but I think it's an image of society that we need to start to have if we really want to go forward. But to do so, we need to start thinking in different terms. I believe that we need a new language. And we're trying to build this language at Out As You. What is Out As You? Out As You is the on one-stop online destination for everything coming out. So to start, we would like to enable people to come out as gay, as lesbian, as queer, as bisexual, as trans, as non-gendered, as asexual, as intersex, as genderqueer, and obviously not to create a homonormative society, as straight. These are just the first focuses of our project, but it's built around being out as you, where also our domain is out.as slash whatever you want. And uh, our aim is to let you be open about yourself and let you come out in any aspect you want, uh, even a temporary one. Out is You is a tool to find help and courage, to find connection, to find testimonials, to find people that can help you. Out is you is a tool to connect with your community because connecting to your community is priceless. Uh, finding people that think 
like you, that, um, that understand you, either online or even better, offline, is absolutely necessary. How does you as a tool to help who's around you understand your coming out? Because coming out is not just about you that are coming out. It's about your family, your friends, and whoever is touched by that coming out. And recently, I encountered this in my social feed. And it's a, it's a kind of tender way of communicating that I really think we need more. Uh, it's an infographic about how to care for introverts. And it says really sweet things like, never reprimand them in public or teach new skills privately. And uh, I, everything uh, from, from this infographic is totally, uh, totally true, like don't interrupt them. And it's the kind of communication that we need to go uh, towards if we want the people to be honest about themselves and to be uh, out as themselves. Again, Out As You is a tool uh, that helps you join a cause. Maybe you don't know that there's an association that's tackling exactly the problem that you're having. Or maybe uh, some friends you're coming out to are saying, what can I do to help? Why don't you join a cause? But Out As You, in the end, it's also just a tool to celebrate coming out, to have an excuse to invite your friends or to uh, ask for gifts and celebrate coming out. Our idea is not to build another social network, uh, another social network. We know that uh, new social networks are in the working, social networks that take into consideration a lot more aspects and that are a lot more evolved than the social networks we are using today. We like to build a social tool that can sit upon any social network. To do so, um, we are a social startup. Social here is a it's like social and social responsibility and not in social media. And we have, we have a brilliant team. Uh, I have the fortune to be uh, accompanied uh, by Rola and Manuel today, but we have an international team in three continents. And um, we, uh, we have done things on the web for years. Uh, we, we like the world. We like building things. We've done stuff in the academic world. Um, in the digital space, but also in the real world, and we really love the web and we like Berlin. Out as you is a nonprofit foundation that has a very, very ambitious goal over the course of 10 years. Over the course of 10 years, we would like to touch 10% of the worldwide population with coming out. So um, this means that we want to. Um, be able to uh, let a lot of people come out and let them communicate this to a lot of other people. And during the same 10 years, we would like to find 10 countries where we are present, we are active, and after these 10 years, we are not needed anymore. We just started. We are, we are in our infancy, and like an infant, we need everything. Uh, but first of all, we need a conversation, we need your feedback, we need your ideas, we need to... We are completely, uh, we are completely open organization, uh, we, we completely believe in this openness, and we welcome uh, all your feedback, be, be it live here uh, on the Twitter back channel, um, through email, through our website. I'm about to conclude, but I want to go back to our refrain. Uh, something has changed from, from the beginning of, our, of this talk, or at least I hope so. Uh, coming out is really not a switch. It's a complex process um, by which we enable, we unleash a lot of value. And it's not just that I'm interested in. Gender is not a, a binary, and it's much, much more complex, and we need uh, we really need to uh, understand it better and, and be able to understand it in others much better. We need more delicate, tender, intimate openness. And to go back to the beginning, in the age of radical openness and collaborative consumption, I believe that we need Out As You to share what is intimate about us. I'd like to leave you just with a, with a suggestion, uh, with a dream. 
this dream would be to start counting, to have the ability to, to really see how many people are coming out country by country, region by region, how this coming out is influencing local communities, the perception that you have of the people that are around you, how counting this number could change um, also how people are viewed, how politicians see them, how policymakers uh, are influenced by this number. And altogether, I hope that this number really shows how much value there is in being out as you. Thank you very much for your attention. These are my contacts.